Hello and welcome to the After Show Afterthoughts. Here I am with my wonderful guest of this evening from Lenny Godfrey's Straight No Chaser, Abdul Ali is here with us. And we are going to look, we have uh, a, a few uh, participants that uh, have, have joined us. And thank you, Mamie, for coming in. I love you. And I'm hoping that you are feeling better uh, from um, your little episode today. I look forward to seeing you um, on Friday. That's my movement guru who was here. Very proud of her. She's brilliant. She's really, really brilliant. She's more, far more brilliant than she thinks she is. Far more. Now, going back, coming back to us. The last question that I asked you was where you know you 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 wanted to do and and uh, and where you wanted the theater to be. But before that, we were voicing our concerns about the responsibilities of those of us who are in the theater and uh, who are participants, who are creators, who those of us who are producers, who green light. And we take all of those positions very, very, very seriously and how we want to com communicate to those people that there is, there's just a concern that they share in the vision of equity, that there is an even distribution of imagery that we have uh, that represents as many people as we possibly can. So that is, you know, um, one of the things that I I really am I'm into. What are your to elaborate on what we were talking about? The concern that you have when you go to the theater, and it's it is not exactly what you want to see. How do we? How do you think we start to making a making a greater impression on these people who have the power to um, green light these these productions that really don't sit well with us? What do you, what are your thoughts? Well, I think um, hmm. some people don't know that they don't know. And I think it's very important mm -hmm. that those of us who do know are facilitating opportunities to expose folks in the industry to um, the Antizake Shanges and the George C. Wolfs the Lynn uh, Nottage, um, Alice Childress, you know, uh, James Baldwin, you know, all of these amazing writers um, so that they have a sense of uh, lineage, mm -hmm. right? And so when they are looking at the newer works, you can see who's done their homework and who's trying to forward these traditions Right. Mm -hmm. But if you have only gone to the McDonald's and Burger King, then you may not know that there are other options, you know. So I think that that's, you know, there, that's part of it. And then, of course, there's an economic part of it, too. Unfortunately, people may want to arrive in busloads to see uh, a Tyler Perry play mm -hmm. over um, mm -hmm. Madia you know, um, mm -hmm. the Greek tragedy. <laughs> yes, Odyssey or anything like that. Yes. Um, you know, and we are, uh, we have to admit, we are elitists, some of us in the theater. And very young, very young ages, we started veering toward very sophisticated kinds of pieces. And we want those pieces to be done. Not everybody finds that interesting. We just find that if, it's, it's not of that quality. We just want it to be of a quality that people understand that the arts has a level of excellence mm -hmm. uh, that we should be trying to attain to. Um, uh, not everyone is going to write, you know, these wonderful classics, but also there are wonderful messages that can be delivered uh, some of them making people feel comfortable. Not everybody's on the same level of sophistication as, as some some other people are. But even when you, you as uh, it was said recently, that audiences now are dummied down. I don't, you know, I I just don't think 
that we respect the intelligent of the intelligence of audiences. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I, I think that the arts is about imagination, you know, and there are so many directors are so important. There are so many ways to take a work and to adapt it to different times. Like, look what they're doing with uh, Death of a Salesman. And how that one choice puts it in the same conversation with A Raisin in the Sun. You, you yes, know what I mean? It does. It and, does. And, yeah. and, and it can. Um, you know, one of the things that I will say um, is that my group, EOA, we've been working on uh, the Linda Lohman monologue for four years. Mm -hmm. the, the opportunity for a woman of a certain culture to be exposed, to share that same experience because it's a universal piece. That kind of, those kinds of experiences are universal. That's and right. so women who have been uh, benefited from that have all showed great talent and have been rewarded for it, but it has not been offered to a lot of us. Uh, I would love to see, there was a company uh, of, of uh, uh, a black Willie Loman, uh, James Earl Jones did it years ago at Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Wendell Pierce is not the first one. He's quite wonderfully the most contemporary one right now. Uh, so, and whether his Linda was a black actress, I don't know. I have not done that research, whether the entire company was black or whether it was done in that period of time when we had non-traditional casting. So you never know what that, you know, that is. I have to do some more research on it, but it's very, very important that these opportunities, when appropriate, when appropriate, be given to as many different cultures as possible. Sometimes it's not appropriate for everybody to do everything. You know, not everybody can do everything. So, let, you know, I, I say to people, let's don't get silly and extreme about that. But when appropriate, um, to have the opportunity is absolutely necessary. You know, that, so, I think we're on the same accord uh, as that when, when, as you say, people go to um, the McDonald's and, uh, uh, and Burger King, but we'd like them to attend the steakhouses that have a little bit more upscale. They're a, a bit more upscale um, than, than that. I agree. You know, I agree. Um, or even a Trader Joe's or a Whole Foods and you can take it home and, and, and do it, do it justice. You know? Exactly. <laughs> you know, one of the things, you know, it's, it's just very, very, it's, it's important that we, um, we just um, expand our horizons a little bit more, not accept what is expected, but to give that. And, and I appreciate, I may not enjoy but I appreciate and respect uh, the choices that are, are being represented. Uh, I just would like to see a more variety of other things. Um, it's just, sometimes some things have a little bit too much information. The subtleties. Oh, yes, uh, missing. Yes, you know. Too much and, exposition, right? Yes, yeah, it's just a little bit too much. So that bothers me a little bit, but other than that, you know, um, just the opportunity uh, I, I, to know that there are different kinds of of of, of playwrights. I remember, um, uh, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, uh, you know what? I'm. Uh, it's it's so f wonderful that. Mamie has said this is her second week and she feels like she's sitting in a show business masterclass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for sharing those those gems with her. Um, you know, it, it is an important kind of thing because now, Mamie, I'm going to allow you to talk if you'd like to. I've 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 given you that option so you can um, you, you're unmuted so you can talk. Um, and if you have a question, we would welcome it. So there you go. So that you know that I've done that, Abdul. 
Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Hi. <laughs> First Hello. of all, I'm doing okay. I got four stitches in my hand, but I'll, I'll be fine. You know. Okay. Yes. So that happened this afternoon. Yeah. Um, no, this is just so interesting for me. And you know, so many times we think when we come up with something good, we're the first ones. And we need to do our homework, like you said, and do our research and understand that there are so many incredible people that have come before us and we need to do our homework and pay respect and take it from there. But I think so many times as young people, they're so excited about what they think they've discovered that they don't do the homework and the research to see who's come before them and then take it from there. Because you you all have given us gems. I'm just going back to the generation before myself, the ones I looked up to, mm -hmm. you know, when I was looking at doing Broadway later on, when I looked at the UBs and sophisticated ladies and all these shows, I was in awe. And I think so many times we don't do our homework, whether it's going into funding, whether it's going into research, whatever it is we try to do, there's so much information out there. And Lenny, this is just amazing because I'm sitting here like, oh my God, I wish I knew Abdul when I was working for that nonprofit. I might have raised a little more money, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> but this is just amazing. And I'm I'm just looking forward to just coming on every week and just treating myself to a master class. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. That's so very kind of you. It's it, you know, I just think that it it is it's one of the things, it's one of the ways that I I have benefited. Uh, what people don't know is I have really benefited uh, so young in my career to be surrounded by such brilliant talent, wonderful talent, uh, and then to go on to be exposed and work with, to study with brilliant people, then to work with some brilliant people, to, you know, to be supported by them. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. And it fosters that need for you to give back. And so if that's the best thing that I can do now, I, I, I thank you. I thank you. And Mamie gives back. You know, she gives to us in the world of performance to keeping us all where we need to be very centered, very ready as performers. And I really appreciate that. Um, now, Abdul, uh, another question before, you know, I'm not going to keep you forever because the after show afterthought should, you know, should 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 be succinct and, and all of that. Fun. I'm having fun. Are you are you I good? Needed some appetizers and cocktails. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this will be people's uh, cocktail hours after. But, but no McDonald's. Uh, no McDonald's. No McDonald's. No, no. Um, uh, with with the with the, the the community of theater growing the way that it is, with young people um, exercising their voices. Um, I feel that, and maybe I'm wrong, and you correct me, and maybe you can still talk too, so please uh, chime in. Uh, it's a little one-sided on the, 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 the whole subject of victimization. I think that there's stories that have to be told and that there are environments that are not great. And I was born and raised in Harlem. So, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not a product of, of a silver spoon from the beginning of my life. There's been transitions in my life so that I, I, I live differently now, but, um, I, I was raised up with people. I've stepped over people who were nodding as I was going down the st steps to go to school. And they'd look up and wave at me because I played with their kids, sisters or brothers. So I know about that victimization, but there's just not enough of the other. Am I the only one who feels like that? Well, can I say this? I was just talking to a filmmaker here in Baltimore about this. And I said to him that, projects that do feature middle class, upper middle class, black characters, I feel as though those sometimes are bigger stereotypes than the victimization because the test for me is whether I believe that mm -hmm. that person lives like that. You know, like the writing has to be solid. It has to be built from the inside out, you know? Don't as, just- as, as, as the same as, as the victimization. I think- Exactly. I think what happens is that you, you don't, the, the writers may not go to these people. They're not accessible. They're a closed, you know, they're philanthropic. A lot of them people, people have money and they don't want a lot of people knowing they have money. And they, so they're not open, they're not vocal. 
So people, uh, sometimes writers will take license with what they think those people, how they think those people look, how they think they talk, how they, and so it comes off false. It comes off, you know, but there, there are so many wonderful stories of people who did not start where they are, were yeah. and, and their journey. And then there's stories of people who had it all their lives and what they're doing, you know, to, and these are not stories that you hear about. Yeah, you know, you, my, you know, and this is why I, I like the Lynn Nottages and the August Wilsons of the world because they approached the writing like an anthropologist, you know, mm -hmm. like they were d doing the research, they were studying, they were bringing in the visual art and the history and all of this. So it wasn't just relying on your own devices, but doing the work yes. to understand. Mm -hmm what was happening in the blues in that decade or exactly. you know, uh, an intimate apparel or, you know, just really doing the work so that you can write from an informed authoritative position when you're building these characters. Absolutely. I, you know, I think it's just another level of approach um, and, and it's not easy. I think you know, what we did this weekend um, uh, with my nonprofit group was show an exercise as to how really the actors, the different levels of what you, the work that you have to achieve before you even come to the table for the first table read. You know, the first table read should not be the first or third or fifth time that you've done it, that you read the script. It should be the 25th time. That you've you've read it, and it should be it should be lots of things in the margins that you can, and it should be done in pencil because the journey is not finished; it's just starting. So things should change, you know. Uh, all of those things um, need to be explored, as well as the progress of the projects that are being written for different levels of people in a culture, you know. Uh, but I guess that's our growth. I guess that's you know. That's what I look forward to in the next five years, to see that growth, to see, to explore those writers that are doing other things. I remember going to my friend Julius Hollingsworth and saying to him, I am so discouraged. If I get another script that I have to say no to, these agents are probably going to throw me away, but I cannot, I am not capable of exercising the characterizations that they are asking for. Are there no writers? And that's how my nonprofit started because then he started showing me all these wonderful writers that are there, but that could not get green lit, no green lighting to their projects. They couldn't get representation. They couldn't get agents. They couldn't because they thought, oh, this won't sell. You know? Well, that's, that's another uh, important part of this conversation. And that is when art and commerce meet you know, the commerce, the, the commodification of our art and stories, we're talking about, well, what is popular, you know, um, mm -hmm. people, oh God, people love a certain kind of story, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. they love mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and we keep seeing um, spinoffs of the same theme. <laughs> as soon as it's popular, they clone it, yep. they clone it. You'll see four of them. You'll see four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that begs the question of, you know, sometimes like with independent film, I find that those stories to be so much more enjoyable. And so I wonder if likewise is true of theater where, you know, maybe your audience isn't Broadway. It may be off, off, you know, Broadway or maybe in the regional theaters or, you know what I mean? Like I, it, it's... Yeah. Well, you know, because, but, but well, theater on, in certain, in, in certain sectors, Broadway is very commercial. It is, it is geared toward tourism and, 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 and lighter. Uh, and it is geared oh. toward people uh, um, trending, mm -hmm. you know? So if you have something else to say, your target might be someplace else. It might eventually take you there, but your target would not be there right. at first. And see, that's a wonderful piece of advice that people wouldn't even, that's why Thrive Arts is going to be, I think, successful. Because it, 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 it really does, and, and I, I think that you all should, one of the advisory council things that I say, you all should 
should c conduct a seminar uh, of, of, of uh, people who are starting theaters and letting them know what these opportunities are because they just don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, they just don't know. Well, yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that off air. Uh, maybe yes. we can collaborate with uh, EOA and make something. Oh my, happen. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 But you know, uh, it, it is a concern of mine. It is one of the things that I love doing the, the theater, whether it's straight play or with music. It it is you know um, a con a concern and and a passion, yeah. uh, and and I look forward to I'm I'm moving into back into my season of performance now and where I yes yeah, going to do a couple of concerts I'm hoping you know and and then over the next six eight months um, and go back to what I my initial uh, love was most people don't know I wanted to be a teacher Monday through Friday. And then Friday night, Saturday night, I wanted to sing in a club like Nancy Wilson. Oh, I love Nancy Wilson. Yes, yes. That's, 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 that's what I wanted to do. That's what I thought I was going to do when I entered college. Yeah. Of course, my, after meeting Marjorie Moon, who was the artistic director for 40 years for the Billy Holiday Theater, and her discovering my theatrical voice in her speech class, mm. um, it changed the whole avenue of, of what I was to do. Oh, I love that. Yes. Yes. At Hampton University. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I left Hampton University to go up to study in New York City with Hunter College. And that's where I met Lloyd Richards. Yes. You and know. I think, did, didn't like Ruby D also go there? Ruby D is an alum. Yes. She was an yeah. alum. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And her son went to school with her son, Guy, there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, did he change he's his name? There. Uh, no, his oh. name is Davis. Mm -hmm. oh. he, he goes by other things. He's a wonderful jazz musician. Okay. Now I've had him on the show and he's, he's like family. He's just a sweetheart. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's, he's a sweetheart. Uh, brilliant, brilliant musician. And I, I, you know, it brings to mind that I need to bring him back so he could talk, talk some more of his stories. His stories are incredible. He's so, so much like his father now. He doesn't even know he is, you know? Wow. Yeah. I think it's so important for schools to have those partnerships with theaters because my daughter was very fortunate that she went to an arts high school. And so mm -hmm. they could walk down the street, you know, and go to center stage and mm -hmm. see everything. And yes. Yes. I want that for all of our young people. Yes. Because when they get up state, when they, you know, are up close and they see uh, stories walking around and, 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 looking familiar i think it does something to you you know you may say i could do that you know yes yes you know? And, and it was it's it becomes within your reach i think the thing that uh, inspired me when i went came back to new york is that uh there were five shows that featured black americans on broadway isn't there, there was bubbling was there the the whiz was there don't bother me i can't cope was there um uh oh um uh what's uh um, um melvin van peebles both of his um plays were on oh. uh, on the street it was five of them they were all he had two on broadway at the same time they were all there everywhere you looked and it revitalized broadway at that point in time it did because broadway wasn't doing so great and so the 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 concept of the churches coming in the community based uh, support that made those things, you know, go alive. The the whiz Stephanie Mills was a, a member of the Concord Baptist Church in Brooklyn, and that was the support mechanism that started all of that. And then the word went out, and word went out, and word went out. So it was it it makes it feasible for it for you to say, I have a place here. Okay. It's not the same now. It doesn't reflect that now. Um, but maybe it, it should, but on a different level, maybe Off-Broadway will do that. You know, maybe it doesn't have to be Broadway now. Maybe Off-Broadway will reflect an equity uh, about, you know, the theater. But uh, we, don't, we do want to create that atmosphere where we get young people who want to say, that's a possibility. I could be a stage manager. I could be a lighting designer. I could be a costume designer. And you can live well too, you know? You, but you, all of that. Oh, work all the time. Farm, work far more often 
That's then, right. the, then, then those of us who perform, you know, or direct, you know, really. And this is what uh, I told my daughter. I said, young lady, you have it all in, it's in you and learn all of it. You know, don't limit yourself. You exactly. Know, you in front of the, on stage, behind stage. I mean, really. Oh, know. it's my, my love is stage managing. I mean, Lloyd had to drag me kicking and screaming from stage managing at Hunter because the, the roles weren't available. So I got into stage managing and that was, it was exactly right up my alley. I'm a Virgo. So it's organizing and doing all of these things and calling and everything. And it's in control and you're in control of the, the production. And I thought, oh my God, this is what I want to do. And he went, so he like snatched me and went, no, you're not. You're getting back on the stage. <laughs> um, but I have such a respect for the stage managers. Good stage managers are absolutely brilliant. And I think dramaturgy is also very- Oh, absolutely. Important. It's very, very important now, especially new plays, you know? People don't know the moment, the, the moment that these works are emerging from. And that's why I don't believe them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> when, when they're in a race- well, but, the, but, the, but they, they don't have- they don't, they don't understand. have access. They don't have the access to the research. They don't have. They don't have that assistance that that backs up what they're doing, so that they, it becomes more specific. What what we're talking about are things that are very broadly approached. You know, it's a broad sweep, and we want things to be more specific, more accurate. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. and also, um, you know, you mentioned that, that play Gem of the Ocean when we had uh, a director from the UK. Mm -hmm. I remember her listing revolutionaries and she mentioned Dr. King and you know I thought that was very interesting because Dr. King wouldn't be the first on my list of yes. revolutionaries. No, no, he wouldn't that that about. association would not immediately happen. Yes. Right. And so I think it's so important for, for you to have that that context, that the history, um and this the authority to back it up. Exactly. You know, it's all exactly. about choices. It know? is about choices. And she was a black woman from the UK. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful uh, experience I had with her. She was, you know, but, but she had another vision. She had another cultural exchange about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, it was different. It was different than what was presented before. And indeed it should be. I if you, for you. Yes. Oh, for me. Hmm. Yeah. What do you think about all of the, Black British actors playing uh, historic African American characters. <laughs> I'm going to be as diplomatic as I can with okay, this. Okay, okay. <laughs> I am not a fan of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I believe that um, with the with the gift of of playing these characters, especially characters who these are uh, uh, non-fictional characters. Um, with the gift of playing them comes a responsibility for people to understand our culture. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people play at our culture. Um, and then some people are so dead on uh, who understand the culture. Mm -hmm. um, like you, I don't want to, to name names, um, but there are actors who have played historical figures uh, on the small screen that were very, very accurate historically and very, and didn't look anything like the historic figures, didn't have to gain weight or do anything like that, uh, but they understood in, intuitively and internally what made that character click because they shared a culture. And we really have to be careful about that. Uh, the other way, we are not allowed the other way. We as Americans are not allowed to go the other way because we are not of that culture. So again, we have to question not the actors, but the people who hire them. Exactly. What is their uh, agenda? Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, I'm not a fan. Did you I'm see The fan. Woman King? No. No? Okay. Not yet. <laughs> because I was at a dinner this weekend 
And I had a long conversation with a, a gentleman about why he wasn't going to see it. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I respect people who choose not to see it, but if you're not going to see it, why do you have all these opinions? You know what I mean? Well, you know, one of the things that I try to do is I try to look at everything that is accessible to me. On television, things come on and I see the preview and sometimes I go, mm -hmm. but I thought, watch it before you make that assessment. And then at least you can say intelligently, well, I watched it. And it did follow my initial feeling. Or I watched it and you know, it was very different than what I thought. Mm -hmm. It really, the intent of it did satisfy me. Uh, I, I find it, you know, uh, the reasoning for not seeing something um, is personal. And, and I think people should be specific about that and, and label their, reasonal, their reasoning personal. This is personal. My personal opinion is it's not a critical opinion of the work. It's not, you know, my, but criti personally, it's just, it's not anything that I want to be seeing. And when they do that, if they preface it like that, I, I have an open mind to what they're saying. If they don't, I'm not as appreciative to their criticism. And you know, that opens up another interesting point. And that is a lot of us aren't even groomed to give good, solid criticism, you know, because I think the, the function of criticism is to see and contextualize, right? Yes. That is, that is but, the function of being a critic. I, I don't think that people understand criticism should always be constructive. Most people, they just want to do a hit job. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I think that is yeah, not serving. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and I'm very protective of my actors because of that. I don't allow the actors to comment on each other's work. And I, I don't allow people to randomly criticize my actors' work because they don't know how much work has gone into it. Um, yeah. But, you know, yeah, people, they're a little insensitive sometimes with their criticisms. And uh, and a little pedestrian, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I you know, know what you mean. Yeah, you know, the uh, critics are supp supposedly trained journalists. A lot of them should be. Um, some of them know how to be constructive with their criticism, and some don't. Yeah. And that's why I've gotten into the habit of not reading anything while I'm performing. Yeah. I, I wait months and months and months until afterwards because you have to commit to this performance once you've committed to it. And you can't let anything, even the very good things blow up your head. Or if someone has said something, make you insecure about Absolutely. your performance. Because it you starts owe, as a seedling and then it will flower. You owe it to the audience and to be consistent you. with what you've committed to be. You yeah. owe it to the audience. They've come to see what you've created and that's your commitment. Yeah, And, uh, I, I, my commitment to that has gotten me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> I will say that it has. I've been asked to change things midstream. Oh, well, this one is coming and they like this kind of performance. And I went, well, what about the other 900 and something people that's in the audience? Right. You know, am I playing this for one person or, or four people? Or am I not playing it for the people who are paying to see it and who have come three and four times and have come to see that, that same performance, why should I have to change it? Now it was fine before. So I've gotten into difficulties that way. Uh, I, I do believe, you know, you commit and you stay to that commitment. And if the audience is not liking it, they won't come. And if they do like it, then you give them what they have you know, have come to see and uh, within a specific range. Um, but um, yeah, I've been punished a little bit because of that. Yeah, but I, I don't believe in being mean. Like I, I try to approach each work with curiosity um, and respect because I know art is a hard thing to make, especially in our culture. Is. And no one, no one goes out to make bad art. No one in, no one spends years creating something, months put getting it up and begging for money and weeks and weeks of rehearsal 
to do something badly. So you start there. It's, their intent was not for this, not for me to not enjoy it. So where did either of us go wrong? <laughs> did I come expecting something else? Did you think that I was going to expect something else? I don't know. Where do we go wrong? You know, yeah. so, yeah. but anyway, all right. I have now talked you to death. This has been fabulous, though. It's it's Love been you, this convers this conversation these these uh, these master classes has made me so uh, readily says to them um, these conversations by people who have you all have such such knowledge to avail us all um, and um, so many experiences and so I thank you for giving us the time. I thank you for accepting the invitation to do it. I thank you for your growth because to, to know you all these years and to remember you as a student there and, and to see where you are now, it's just wonderful, you know? Um, that thank you goes in both directions. Um, I, I think that it's very special, you know, when the artist makes herself accessible mm -hmm. to a young student, you know? <laughs> Um, because, you know, you look like um, uh, Hollywood, you know, in the rehearsal with the, with the fur and everything. And you were just so warm, you know, it could have went a different direction. And so me being shy, um, you, you know, I kind of held out my hand and you received it. And I'm ever so grateful for that. Um, well, you know, I was so proud. I was just so proud that you were there doing that and that I could be of any assistance. It was great. But we're going to end this now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very, very much for um, coming and uh, and being a part of this and watching this as it's being recorded. Thank you, Mamie, for coming and 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 uh, and participating. And we will see you again. Like I said, we um, uh, we'll see you at the next after show afterthoughts uh, again. Thank you, and we will end this. You stay and you made me stay, um, uh, but I'm going to end this recording right now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.